Hey guys, it's Mike. Welcome to Marine Breeders Vlog number four. Uh, sorry, it's been kind of a while, been really, really busy. Uh, as you can see, I've got the new camcorder now, and we're going to try to film some stuff in the fish room this week. Um, I guess uh, let's start with giving you guys a little tour here. So, this over here is our grow out system. It's nothing fancy by any means. Um, I really needed to scrape the glass a little better. These are some little guys that are about 35 days old. It's a mix of black and whites and orange oscillaris. Uh, this one right now still needs to be cleaned out. Uh, I've been slowly going through and cleaning this stuff out over time as I need the tanks. This down here has a mix of black and whites and orange oscillaris that are between 60 and 90 days old. And this one over here has a bunch of adults that are ready, way ready to go to sale. These guys here are about eight months old. On our grow out system, as you can see, we use an old, old school skimmer. It's just a Venturi skimmer. It seems to do the job for right now. I'm using an old an acrylic aquarium uh, with live rock and skimming. That's about it. That's all we're doing for filtration. Uh, the sump is full of live rock. You can see the auto top off. By the way, these tanks are 40 gallon tanks. They're three foot tanks. Uh, they're 40 gallon breeders. They were made for a guy that was originally doing koi farming and they were for growing out koi and we picked these up many years ago from a friend. This over here is two of the four larval tubs. Two of the larval tubs are not set up yet. Uh, I hope to have more. These are the tough stuff tubs that you can get from uh, Tractor Supply and they hold this one here the stand pipes a little higher on it it's currently empty uh, the ones that are up and grow out number one they just got pulled out of here yesterday I still need to tear this down and clean it out dry it up it holds approximately 14 15 gallons of water and let's see if we can see some of these babies this has some black and whites that just hatched two days ago I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see them here. No. I think the reflection on the water is a little bit too much. Anyways, uh, I currently use a green water method. After, after they hatch, I let them go most of the day with no green water. I will add a little bit of rotifers first, first thing in the morning. Then usually on the evening of the first day, uh, I was putting somewhere between four to six mils to initially green it up. This time I'm trying only two mils. So I use two mils of Roddy Green Omega, and I green it up, and I do that twice a day so it gets four mils a day. And after the first couple editions of, of rotifers, I really don't need to add anymore. They seem to take care of themselves. So that's what we're trying right now. Like I said, I tried reducing it. I think we were putting too much green in. So we'll see, we'll see how that pans out. Uh, this is a real simple system. It's got a pretty robust needle wheel skimmer on it. Uh, that is a reef octopus it really pulls the junk out. There is also an 8 watt uh, gamma UV sterilizer from Current USA and this right here is bio balls that are all linked together and I made a as you can see with the lines on there I made a plate um, 
and drilled a whole bunch of holes to basically make a big drip plate. Seems to work pretty good. Uh, because this system is so small, I mean, water changes are really easy to keep up with. Over here is our broodstock system. Uh, these consist of C-Clear retail display units. Uh, each one has three cubes. As you can see, there's two partitions in each one. Um, they are four foot long. Um, they're working sufficiently well. I don't like the water flow in them. As you can see, there gets to be a lot of uh, food accumulation in the bottoms. Say hi, guys. Say, we just laid a new nest just a couple hours ago. Big nest. Uh, these are my one and only Ocellaris that I have now, and they produce lots of babies. And this is my big black and white pair, and you can see they just laid a nest also uh, just a few hours ago. And she is huge. She is almost five inches from tip of snout to end of tail. Um, I have never seen a clownfish other than a maroon get as large as what she is. They're okay producers. Not, not the best. Um, I apologize guys for the reflections. A lot of that has to do with because of the lighting. I'm going to try different lighting as you can see for the larval tubs. I just have a double uh, T5 fixture that's two foot long over top of them right now. And I'm going to try doing some clip one lights here soon. So this system consists of just a sump that's down underneath. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see much of anything. Uh, it's got an ASM5 skimmer that does an okay job. I would like to have a bigger skimmer for sure. And once again, I've got live rock. I do take the live rock out periodically and I wash it in a five gallon bucket to help keep the detritus down. Um, the biggest downfall I would say would be the problems with um, uh, critters and creatures that will end up in your system like Aptasia. Um, actually the Aptasia have been getting pretty bad. So uh, this has a one third horsepower uh, chiller that I plumbed into the system. Uh, by the way, excuse the mess. Uh, everything, I'm in the midst of kind of remodeling and redoing some things and place is kind of a mess down here. Um, but this chiller, uh, I think I'm gonna remove it off of there and I'm gonna plumb in. I've got four more of those 40 gallon tanks and I think I'm gonna plumb those in and make this, maybe even partition them off and make those into uh, eight more spots for more brood stock and plumb them all to go down into this sump and I can then plumb off of the chiller, take, remove the chiller and use that water flow for the other tanks. So we'll see. Over here is basically the same thing. Uh, two more. And one of my lights just went out. I guess it's getting late. Uh, this is my dotty back pair. She's been uh, full of eggs for a long time, but I have yet to get her to lay anything. That's the male. He's sitting out there. Say hi. Uh, this is my true percula pair. They have yet to lay anything. Uh, they are captive bred. Uh, these are my fire, fire clowns. Oh, where'd you guys go? Oh no. I guess they're being camera shy. This here's our uh, snowflakes. They are sustainable aquatics uh, lineage. Very beautiful fish. They have paired up and we're anxiously awaiting them to lay their first nest. And another pair of black and whites. Uh, these black and whites are probably gonna end up being for sale. They have never laid a nest, although they are paired together. Um, they've never laid a nest and I've had them for well over a year so I don't know we'll hold on to them for a little while longer uh, unfortunately the lights went out this is part of our reef system uh, this is where we used to house our frags 
but as you can see here's one of our platinums that we're anxiously growing up uh, if you guys remember I uh, talked about I got some fish from Pro Aquatics and there's some black and whites in here and the platinums there you guys are I'm anxiously awaiting them to grow up and to see what happens I want to see uh, what I get out of them so this system consists of two four foot by two foot by 16 inch high acrylic aquariums and they are plumbed in to the main sump over here uh, the plumbing goes back behind the wall and a very dirty skimmer that skims the water for the reef tank reef tank needs to be cleaned um, this was basically just storage of some leftover stuff from the one aquarium that aquarium system that we did uh, for the Museum of Natural History so anyways it's not a big fish room it's not a lot um, this is our rotifers down I am going to be expanding stuff though I've got some room just simple two five gallon buckets of rotor for cultures nothing fancy so that's our fish room um, I've been wanting to show you guys this for a while the reef tank like I said it's nothing that's any big deal it's just a big fiberglass tank that actually used to be out at SeaWorld of Ohio and uh, it's just basically used for storage of stuff I don't even scrape the glass too often once in a while uh, we may try to get it shaped back up into you know good shape of a reef tank but uh, anyways hope you guys enjoyed this um, I do apologize for not uh, getting the vlogs out as timely as I'd like things in uh, the real world have been quite busy so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this if you have any comments or questions you know leave them down below uh, I will leave some information in the description also in two weeks I'm gonna be at MBI workshop so if you guys think about it try to go if you can uh, if you're into marine fish breeding it'd be a great place to go um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of people, uh, maybe getting some questions answered, and we'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one.